Hey, all the awesome tutors. And today we're looking at the, the labor market, specifically the demand for labor. Now, what you have to understand about the labor market is it is a factor market. Remember, labor is a factor of production. And because it's a factor of production, the, the, these diagrams do not show us demand or supply for goods or services. They show us demand and supply for labor. So how, how, how employers um, want to hire workers or, or, or reduce the number, the number of workers they employ, depending on the wage rate, or how workers offer their labor services in return. So it shows us how the wage rate and employment, for, and employment of labor interact. The demand for labor is defined as how many workers an employer is willing and able to hire at each given wage rate in a given time period. So the demand for labor is inelastic. If wages go up, for example, from W from W1 to W2, then demand for labor will contract. Because now the cost of production of a firm has increased because the cost of labor is now higher. And so firms want to reduce these costs by reducing the number of workers. So employment falls from E1 to E2. By the way, you could also, instead of employment, you could say quantity, but it doesn't really matter. All right? I prefer to use employment. If wages decrease, for example, from W2 to W1, then demand for labor will extend. Because now, labor is relatively cheaper. Okay, you can hire more workers now while still keeping costs lower, so employment goes up. Or, for example, if you look at the substitution effect, labor might become, labor might become more cheaper, labor might become cheaper than capital. And so, you will substitute capital for labor, Okay, switch the capital, use labor instead, because it is now, it is now relatively cheaper, so you'll be able to manage your costs more effectively. If we look at shifts now, shifts of the demand for labor, um, the level of consumer demand for a product. So what you have to understand about the labor market is it is based on derived demand. So the, so, so the demand for labor depends on the demand for the good or service that they produce. If the consumer demand for that product increases, the demand for labor producing that product will increase. Okay? It also depends on, on a macro scale. If the economy is expanding, there'll be a rise in output, so you need more workers to produce that output. So demand for labor shifts to the right. If there's a recession, the opposite happens. Okay? Less output, less workers needed. Also, businesses want to cut their operation costs and business might close down, so you don't need as much labor, etc, etc, etc. So, be, so, there, be short, so there, will be, there will be short term redundancies. Redundancy is when you need to get rid of workers because you don't, you don't longer need their jobs. You do not replace that worker, you just get rid of that worker. Okay? In fast growing markets as well, there will be a strong rise in demand for labor. So for example, uh, the market for smartphones or for smartphones or tablets, uh, that is a fast-growing market. So you, the, you're going to demand more labor to either produce those phones or tablets or program those phones or tablets or whatever. Okay. Here we have some diagrams. If the demand for labor shifts to the right, then businesses are going to employ more labor at the same wage rate. The opposite will happen if demand for labor shifts to the left. Businesses are going to demand less labor at the same wage rate. Another shift, uh, another shifter or determinant um, of labor demand is factor substitution, okay? If the productivity of labor increases relative to capital, then it's going to be more cost efficient to use labor instead of capital. So the demand for labor will, the demand for labor will increase. Government employment subsidies, if the government gives you subsidies to employ more labor, then you're going to employ more labor because it's not going to cost you anything. The government is paying for it. So, elasticity. Wage elasticity of demand for labor. That's also important. It depends on these following factors. The percentage of total costs that the labor makes up. If the labor costs are a small percentage of your total costs, then demand for labor is likely to be inelastic. Okay, it doesn't matter if there is a large increase in wages because that is a small percentage of your total cost, so it will not affect your profits as much. 
the ease and cost of factor substitution. But it's easy to switch capital for labor or the other way around, then demand for labor is going to be elastic. Okay? If the wages for labor go up, even by a little bit, then you're going to switch the labor for capital because it's easy for you to do that. So demand for labor will be inelastic. Okay? So employment is sensitive to changing wages. The price elasticity of demand for a product. Okay? If the demand for the product is inelastic, that means if there's a large wage there's a large wage increase for the labor, then you can pass on that cost onto the consumers because the demand for the product is inelastic, so the demand will not decrease for that product by that much. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw that for you because it's you might get a little bit confused. So the demand for the product is inelastic. That means the demand for labor will be inelastic. Because if wages go up by a large amount from W1 to W2, you can pass on those extra costs onto the consumer, increasing prices from P1 to P2 without losing that much profit. So you don't need to reduce the number of workers you need by that much. All right? Also, time period. In the, in the short run, demand for labor is likely to be inelastic. In the long run, it's likely to be more el elastic. So demand for labor is inelastic. Large, the large rise in wages, for example, will not affect the employment by that much. It will only cause a small fall in employment. Okay, as we saw with this example here, with the elastic, with the inelasticity, with the inelasticity of the product. Okay, that's demand for labor. This has been the awesome tutor. Bye.